you may perceive them as markedly distinct. The Big Bang, intensely dense and scorching hot, stands in stark contrast to the remote future, destined to be rarefied and frigid. The once undisputed Big Bang theory now faces relentless scrutiny from the renowned physicist, Roger Penrose. Recent revelations hint at the universe concealing secrets that could upheave the very foundation of our cosmic origins. Disregard everything you believed about the Big Bang theory, and prepare yourself. Penrose's theory proposes an alternate narrative for the genesis of our universe. Is the Big Bang merely a chapter in the tale of our cosmic origin? If so, what alternative theories shed light on the commencement of our universe? Join us as we delve into the insights of Roger Penrose. A trace of a previous universe preceding the Big Bang has been detected. The prevailing scientific and astrological theory asserts that over 13.8 billion years ago, the universe existed in an intensely hot and dense state known as the Big Bang. However, recent images captured by the James Webb Space Telescope challenge this widely accepted understanding. While these images captivate the general audience, they also instigate concerns within the cosmological and astronomical communities. Experts are taken aback by the disparities introduced by these images to the long-established Big Bang theory. This fresh data has triggered significant unrest among scientists, leading astronomers like Alison Kirkpatrick from the University of Kansas to reassess the validity of their previous research. The focal point of this unrest lies in the characteristics of the galaxies depicted in the JWST images. Contrary to expectations based on the Big Bang theory, these galaxies appear unusually small, smooth, and remarkably old. According to the theory, as space expands, galaxies and celestial objects should appear larger as they move away due to the stretching of light. However, the JWST images reveal a perplexing phenomenon where galaxies seem to shrink as the distance increases. Even galaxies with greater mass and brightness than our Milky Way appear two to three times smaller in the JWST images, compared to previous observations by the Hubble Space Telescope. Moreover, the observed red shifts in these galaxies are two to three times more pronounced, further challenging the assumptions of an expanding universe in the Big Bang theory. These observations imply that distant galaxies must be minuscule to account for this optical illusion, which appears implausible. These diminutive and smooth galaxies undermine the notion of expansion, casting doubt on the validity of the Big Bang theory. Initially, proponents of the theory acknowledged that their assumptions required the existence of small and dense galaxies, informally known as mighty mouse galaxies based on earlier Hubble observations. However, the situation has been further complicated by JWST images, questioning whether these compact galaxies could transform into larger ones through collisions or expansion. The JWST images portray well-defined spiral structures and smooth disks resembling galaxies observed in the present day. This contradicts the anticipation of rough and distorted galaxies resulting from collisions. Without significant mergers, these minute galaxies cannot grow 100 times larger, challenging the concept that they were initially small. This revelation disputes the optical illusion predicted by the expanding universe theory, suggesting a potential absence of expansion and no Big Bang. The age and abundance of galaxies in the JWST images present additional challenges for the Big Bang theory. Using infrared filters, the JWST captures the colors of distant galaxies, allowing astronomers to estimate the age of the stars within them. According to the theory, these galaxies should represent approximately 400 to 500 million years after the Big Bang. However, some of these galaxies exhibit stellar populations over a billion years old contradicting the assumption that nothing could have existed before the Big Bang. Furthermore, theorists expected that as the JWST delved deeper into space and farther back in time, there would be fewer galaxies and eventually no dark age. However, the images reveal galaxies as large as the Milky Way even just a few hundred million years after the derived Big Bang. Additionally, the number of galaxies observed at redshifts above 10 is at least 100,000 times greater than predicted by theorists. The formation of so many substantial galaxies in such a condensed time frame challenges the Big Bang theory. These discoveries have sparked a re-examination of the concept of time. Some scientists propose that time is merely a human construct, serving as a tool to distinguish between the present and our perception of the past. They posit that time is an illusion created by human memories, suggesting that all events, past and future, happen simultaneously. 
this perspective challenges the traditional notion that time progresses strictly forward. Some proponents of the Big Crunch theory take a step further by suggesting that time might reverse if the universe halts its expansion and starts contracting. This reversal could potentially undo the cooling and expansion observed in the Big Bang, ultimately leading the universe to collapse back to its point of origin. The consequences of such a Big Crunch remain uncertain, with various theories circulating. Some propose a fresh start with another Big Bang, while others entertain the possibility of the universe simply ceasing to exist. Some ideas even consider a cyclical nature, repeatedly generating multiple universes. The ongoing debate about the direction of time has prompted scientists to question its fundamental nature. Some advocate for a block universe concept, where space and time are intricately interconnected in what is known as space time. Drawing from Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, the block universe viewpoint asserts that time and space are part of a four dimensional structure, where each event has its position in space time. This implies that past, present, and future coexist in space time, making them equally significant. Physicist Max Tegmark from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology addresses this concept by suggesting that reality can be depicted as either a three dimensional space where events unfold over time, or a four dimensional space where nothing changes. If the latter is true, it implies that everything already exists at any given moment, encompassing the past, present, and future. However, the illusion that the past has occurred and the future is yet to come leads us to perceive change. Julian Barber, a British physicist renowned for his extensive writings on time, provides a unique perspective. He likens our experiences to a series of nails, emphasizing that our awareness is limited to our brain state. According to Barber, the perception of the past arises from storing memories in our brains. Drawing from the space-time theory, Barber introduces the concept of plutonia, where each point represents a now. He suggests that what we commonly perceive as the past is an illusion crafted by our brains. This discussion circles back to Albert Einstein's theory of space-time, which has stirred confusion in the field of physics. Scientists are now contemplating the potential consequences if Einstein's theory were proven incorrect. Could discarding the space-time theory lead to a better understanding of the universe? Such a development would mark a significant milestone. Throughout history, scientific revolutions have been pivotal for progress. Dissatisfaction and doubts often pave the way for new theories to replace old ones, a pattern witnessed in astronomy and physics. In the early days, humanity believed that Earth was at the center of the solar system, a notion that persisted for over millennia. However, Nicholas Copernicus proposed a heliocentric model, suggesting that Earth is another planet orbiting the Sun. Despite initial resistance, this model gained support with the advent of telescopes. Isaac Newton further contributed to our understanding by explaining that the Sun's gravitational force causes planets to orbit it. Newton's theory dominated scientific thought for nearly 300 years until Albert Einstein introduced his general theory of relativity in 1915. This new theory effectively explained the quirks in Mercury's orbit and received strong confirmation during a 1919 solar eclipse near Africa. Unlike Newton's idea of gravity as a force, Einstein saw gravity as a result of space. He proposed that everything in the universe exists within a four-dimensional structure known as space-time, where significant entities like the Sun cause this structure to curve. This curvature influences the movement of planets, and observers perceive it as a force, akin to Newton's description. Einstein's space-time theory has been the predominant idea for over a century, gaining further prominence after the detection of gravitational waves in 2015. However, like previous theories, it may encounter challenges as it clashes with quantum theory, another fundamental physics theory. The quantum world is renowned for its peculiar features, where particles can exist in multiple places simultaneously. In the 1930s, Owen Schrödinger illustrated the oddity of quantum superposition with his famous Schrödinger cat experiment. In this experiment, a sealed box contains poison linked to a hammer triggered by a quantum measurement. According to quantum physics, until someone checks, the particle is in both states, rendering the cat both alive and dead. However, this quantum idea doesn't align with the smooth fabric of space-time. Even Sabine Hossenfelder, a theoretical physicist at the Frankfurt Institute for Advanced Studies, acknowledges this conflict. 
According to Einstein's space-time theory, a gravitational field cannot be in two places simultaneously. The theory follows the principles of matter and energy subjected to curvature. On the other hand, quantum physics suggests that matter and energy can exist in many states simultaneously, challenging traditional ideas of locality. This dilemma raises the question of where the gravitational field truly exists. Hossenfelder concedes that there is no satisfactory answer to this question, emphasizing the ongoing challenge of reconciling general relativity with quantum theory. Efforts to merge these two theories result in mathematical inconsistencies, with calculations sometimes yielding probabilities greater than one or even infinity, lacking meaningful physical interpretations. Consequently, the two theories are considered mathematically incompatible. In their quest for a unified theory of quantum gravity, physicists are seeking harmony between these rival theories, much like historical monarchs seeking alliances. String theory emerges as a prominent proposal in this endeavor. Often considered an unconventional possibility, string theory posits that tiny vibrating strings make up subatomic particles like electrons and quarks. Just as different notes can be produced by placing strings on a musical instrument, string theorists argue that various particles arise from different combinations of strings. While appealing for its potential to reconcile general relativity with quantum physics, this theory requires strings to vibrate across 11 dimensions, seven more than the four dimensions in Einstein's space-time fabric. Currently, there is no experimental evidence supporting the existence of these extra dimensions. Despite its mathematical intrigue, the accuracy of string theory in describing our lived space-time remains uncertain without experimental validation. In response to perceived shortcomings of string theory, physicists have turned to an alternative approach known as loop quantum gravity, LQG. This theory reconciles two conflicting theories by challenging a fundamental principle of general relativity, which asserts that space-time is a continuous, smooth fabric. Instead, LQG proposes that space-time consists of interwoven loops, providing structure at the smallest scale. This concept can be likened to a length of cloth that initially appears smooth but reveals a network of stitches upon closer inspection. Alternatively, it resembles a photograph on a computer screen composed of individual pixels that become evident when zoomed in. The challenge with loop quantum gravity arises from the incredibly tiny scale referred to as the Planck scale, roughly a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a meter. J. Maluck at the University of Nottingham points out that the number of loops in a cubic centimeter of space at this scale would surpass the total number of cubic centimeters in the entire observable universe. Testing LQG at the Planck scale poses a formidable task, requiring a particle accelerator about a trillion times more powerful than the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. Moreover, such a colossal device would need to be as vast as our Milky Way galaxy. Nevertheless, a group of physicists from the UK, France, and Hong Kong is working to propose an alternative method. They plan to use an ultra-cold gas containing billions of cesium atoms in a state known as a Bose-Einstein condensate to explore whether gravity exhibits quantum properties. The universe itself provides another avenue to investigate small space-time defects. Light from distant parts of the universe has traveled through billions of light-years of space-time. Although each space-time defect's effect may be minuscule, interactions with multiple defects could accumulate, leading to observable effects over vast distances. Astronomers have examined light from distant gamma-ray bursts for over a decade to find evidence supporting LQG. These cosmic events occur when massive stars collapse at the end of their lives. However, unexplained systematic distortions in the spectrum of these distant bursts remain, as observed by Hossenfelder. It remains uncertain whether these distortions occur during their journey or are related to the bursts themselves. Due to this uncertainty, progress may require moving beyond Einstein's idea that space-time is a smooth and continuous fabric. Einstein proposed that space-time is like a stage always existing, and objects move within it even without celestial bodies. However, physicists Lauren Friedel, Robert Lee, and George Aminich present a different view. They argue that space-time isn't independent of objects but is defined by their interactions. In their perspective, space-time is a product of the quantum world, not something separate from it. This idea challenges the norm, 
but Minnick considers it a precise solution to a long-standing problem about locality and a quantum phenomenon called entanglement. The appeal of the modular space-time theory lies in its potential to tackle issues in theoretical physics and explain strange quantum behaviors. Physicists often observe entanglement, where changing the properties of one particle instantly affects another particle, even if they are far apart. Einstein called this phenomenon spooky action at a distance. The modular space-time theory accommodates such behavior by redefining the concept of separation. If space-time emerges from the quantum world, proximity in a quantum sense becomes more fundamental than physical proximity. Minnick explains that different observers may have different ideas of locality depending on the context. This is similar to how we feel closer to a loved one far away than a nearby stranger. Hossenfelder adds that these non-local connections are acceptable as long as they remain relatively small. Friedel, Lee, and Minnick have been developing their idea for the past five years, taking a conservative approach step by step. Despite the gradual progress, Minnick acknowledges the exciting nature of their research, considering it both compelling and promising. The team's unique approach centers on exploring a quantum world influenced by gravity rather than quantizing gravity itself, as seen in loop quantum gravity. Like any scientific theory, it needs testing, and the team is currently working on incorporating it into their model. While this might seem abstract and relevant only to academics, it has the potential to significantly impact our daily lives. Our existence is closely connected to space and time, and any shifts in our understanding of space-time would affect how we understand gravity. Quantum theory plays a crucial role in the functioning of our current devices. Sabine Hossenfelder points out that a better understanding of the quantum structure of space-time could have implications for future technologies. Though these effects may not be immediate, they could become apparent within the next 200 years. Hossenfelder uses the metaphor of a monarch at the end of their reign and a new successor being overdue. Once we identify the most likely contender among various theories, a revolution in theoretical physics could occur. Astronomers, scientists, and physicists are confronted with this situation and must consider the best course of action to address these ideas and discoveries. In addition to string theory and loop quantum gravity, several other theoretical frameworks and ideas have been proposed to unravel the mysteries of space-time and gravity. These alternatives seek to provide new perspectives on the fundamental nature of the universe. These theories include causal dynamical triangulation, CDT, emergent gravity, asymptotic safety, quantum graphite, and non-commutative geometry. Causal dynamical triangulation, CDT, is a quantum gravity approach that views spacetime as a network of triangles. This theory aims to describe the emergence of space and time through discrete building blocks, focusing on the causal structure of events within spacetime. Emergent gravity challenges the traditional idea of gravity as a fundamental force, suggesting that gravity is not a fundamental force but emerges as an effective description of more basic quantum interactions. The holographic principle, inspired by string theory, is an example where a lower dimensional theory accurately represents a higher dimensional spacetime. Asymptotic safety challenges the conventional idea that gravity becomes uncontrollable at high energies, proposing that it remains well defined and predictable even at extreme scales. Quantum graphite envisions spacetime as a dynamic graph with nodes and edges interacting to produce familiar space and time properties. Non commutative geometry challenges the idea that spacetime coordinates commute at small scales proposing non-commutative properties that could fundamentally change our understanding of the universe. While string theory and loop quantum gravity are prominent contenders in the quest for a unified theory, scientists have diverse perspectives on space-time and gravity. Two notable figures with contrasting viewpoints are Roger Penrose and Michio Koku. Renowned physicist and mathematician Roger Penrose has greatly contributed to our understanding of general relativity and black holes. His idea, called conformal cyclic cosmology, suggests that the universe goes through endless cycles of expanding from a big bang to contracting in a big crunch. Penrose also explained how black holes form through gravitational collapse, providing insights into these celestial objects. On the other hand, Michio Koku has been instrumental in developing and popularizing string theory. Despite acknowledging its importance, Koku recognizes that string theory needs experimental proof. 
he emphasizes the need for better technology, like more powerful particle accelerators, to test the predictions of string theory. Koku is open to alternative ideas, including loop quantum gravity and emergent gravity, hoping they can provide new insights into space-time and gravity. The scientific community thrives on sharing ideas and exploring various theories as researchers delve into the universe's mysteries. Debates persist on the most promising approach to unify general relativity and quantum mechanics. Each scientist contributes unique expertise, fostering a lively theoretical physics landscape and paving the way for future breakthroughs.